In this video, I'm talking about how speech and noise hearing aid programs help you hear your best in background noise. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. It should come as no surprise that the hearing aid programs that are designed to help you hear better in a quiet situation are not the best programs to help you hear your best in a background noise situation. It is for this reason that all major hearing aid manufacturers have speech in noise programs that you can manually switch into with your hearing aids or that can be switched into automatically by your hearing aids. But what do these speech in noise programs actually do to help you hear your best in background noise? Well, I'm gonna get into that, but before I do, there are a few key concepts that you need to understand and the first one that we're gonna talk about is signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio, which is abbreviated SNR, is the ratio of the signal or speech that you want to hear versus the noise that you don't want to hear. And this ratio is often expressed in decibels. For instance, if you have a signal to noise ratio of one to one, it means that the signal that you want to hear is at the exact same level as the noise that you do not want to hear. You can also express this in a single digit, and in this case of a one-to-one -one ratio, that digit would be zero, meaning that there is no difference between the signal and the noise. If you use the single number SNR value like you typically see in research studies, then if you have a signal that is five decibels louder than the noise, you have a plus five SNR. On the other hand, if you have noise that is five decibels louder than the signal, then you have a minus five SNR value. All that being said, you basically want the highest positive SNR value, which means that you have significantly more signal than you do noise. And for every single decibel of increase of the signal, it roughly translates into about 10% improvement in word recognition. Another concept that you need to understand is the upward spread of masking. Upward spread of masking is a phenomenon that occurs when low frequency sounds drown out or mask over high frequency sounds. Since basically all sounds need to enter the cochlea at the oval window, low frequency sounds have to pass through the high frequency ranges of the basilar membrane. This means that really intense low frequency sounds can inadvertently mask over high frequency sounds, preventing you from hearing them optimally. Since high frequency speech information is critical for understanding speech in a background noise situation, upward spread of masking can be detrimental to performance in background noise. Okay, now that you have a very basic understanding of these two different concepts, I'm gonna go ahead and get into what hearing aid manufacturers do in these speech and noise programs to help you hear your best in background noise. The first thing that speech and noise programs do to help you hear better in background noise is something called directionality to improve your signal to noise ratio. With two microphones on a hearing aid, one in the front and one on the back, it helps that hearing aid identify which direction that sound is originating from. So if sound is coming from the front, it will strike the front microphone, then the rear microphone, and it will tell that hearing aid that that sound originated from in front of it. However, if you have sound that comes from the rear, it strikes the rear microphone milliseconds before it strikes the front microphone, telling the hearing aid that that sound came from behind you. To take this a step further, if you have a hearing aid on your other ear as well, you technically have four microphones. So now no matter which direction sound is coming from, the timing difference between any one of those four microphones helps those hearing aids determine which direction sound is coming from. Why is directionality so important inside of a speech and noise program? program, well, it allows you to actually face the person that you want to hear and amplify their voice versus amplifying all of these other sounds around you. The degree or width of this pickup range can be specifically programmed in this speech and noise program by your hearing care professional to make sure that they have it dialed in exactly to your needs. Directionality can improve your signal to noise ratio, typically anywhere between one and four decibels, which is between a 10 and 40% improvement in a background noise situation. And of course, this does depend on the type of dome that you use on your hearing aid or the size of vent that you have on your custom ear mold on your hearing aid. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but I have a huge favor to ask. If you could click the like button on this video, it really helps the YouTube algorithm recommend this video to more individuals. All that being said, I really appreciate it, and now back to the video. 
The second thing that speech and noise programs do to help you hear your best in background noise is employ noise reduction algorithms. Noise reduction is simply reducing the amount of amplification to background noise by using digital signal processing. A speech and noise program can typically identify background noise by its steady state nature. When you think about it, a lot of noise sources do not have a lot of peaks and valleys in them. So when you think about a vehicle running, or a fan running, or an air conditioner running, or even a noisy restaurant, there's not a whole lot of fluctuations in that noise. In contrast to that, you have human speech that has a lot of different peaks and valleys when someone's talking to you. It is this difference between the peaks and valleys of human speech versus the steady state nature of noise that allows noise reduction to work. Hearing aids will pick up all of these different sounds, and it has to basically categorize all of those sounds in channels or buckets. All of the buckets that have just noise get reduced in the amount of amplification that's given to them. All of these buckets that have speech or speech and noise are kept elevated. So what happens here is that you get accentuated speech but reduced background noise. Now this often makes noisy situations more tolerable. It does not necessarily improve your ability to understand speech in those environments. The level or amount of noise reduction that is utilized inside of a speech and noise program can be adjusted by your hearing care professional. If you do not tolerate noise well, then you will typically want a very high amount of noise reduction. If you do tolerate noise well, then you typically want to keep this noise reduction low as to not interfere with audibility for certain sounds. The third thing that can be done in a speech and noise program to help you hear your best in background noise is to reduce the amount of low frequency amplification that you get to prevent the upward spread of masking. If we were to go into a noisy restaurant and measure the amount of noise in that restaurant, we would typically identify that that noise isolates more in the low frequency ranges. So if we end up amplifying low frequencies too much, you guessed it, we can over amplify them and actually drown out these high frequency sounds that your brain uses to separate speech from background noise. However, you do not always want to limit the amount of low frequency amplification if you have a hearing loss in the low frequencies, because you may need that low frequency speech information when you're in more calm, quiet environments. And this is exactly why we have these different speech and noise programs, so you can use these features when you need them. And the fourth thing that can be done inside of a speech and noise program to improve how well you hear in background noise is to make sure that you have a higher maximum power output setting. Maximum power output, otherwise known as MPO, is basically the ceiling of amplification that you can get from a hearing aid. And you might think that you want to lower down the MPO in a noisy environment because you don't want to subject yourself to all of that noise. But if you have the MPO set too low, it can actually restrict the peaks of amplification for human speech, which can prevent you from actually understanding the person you're talking to in a noisy environment. Sometimes the default MPO settings, or even lower than the default MPO settings, are sufficient enough when you're in a calm, quiet environment. But when you go into a background noise situation and you start using a speech and noise program, if you have MPO settings that are set too low, it can actually restrict speech information that prevents you from hearing your best in those environments. At the same time, you do not want your hearing care professional just to crank up all of the MPO settings on your hearing aids. They need to be methodical about this to make sure that they're not just completely over amplifying all sounds. Different hearing aid manufacturers will utilize these different features in different ways inside of their speech and noise programs to make sure that you get the best speech understanding possible and the most auditory comfort possible. All this being said, something else that should be done by your hearing care professional for them to optimize your speech and noise program for a background noise situation is real ear measurement. Real ear measurement is simply a way to verify that you're getting the proper amount of amplification for your hearing loss prescription during hearing aid programming. In a 2012 study, it was identified that hearing aids that were programmed using real ear measurement resulted in a significant improvement in the ability to understand speech and noise. You can also see here that when real ear measurement is not performed, even an old analog hearing aid can outperform even the best digital hearing aids on the market. So no matter how you set up your speech and noise programs with directionality, noise reduction, low frequency reduction in amplification, or optimizing your MPO settings, none of this matters unless Reeler measurement has been performed on your devices. Now if you want to learn more about Reeler measurement, then I highly recommend that you check out my video that I will have linked in the description. At the end of the day, there is no single setting that is perfect for any speech and noise program. You need to make sure that your hearing care professional is following a person-centered care approach when 
setting up your hearing aids to your specific wants, needs, and preferences. And if they do, you'll hear your absolute best in background noise. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com. Oh, <laughs>